I kind of talk about people like automobiles, right? We're all human, like we're all automobiles. Some of us are Jeeps, some of us are Ferraris, some of us are SUVs. And there's no judgment there because the Jeep can do things the Ferrari can't do, the Ferrari can do things the Jeep can't do. So the idea is, can you lift your hood and figure out what engine you're working with? Because you may be a Jeep that's been trying to run on a Ferrari track or a Ferrari that's been trying to run on a Jeep track. And that's okay too. If you're a Jeep that's running on a Ferrari track, if you choose to run on the Ferrari track, that's fine. But but you can you can say, hey, now I know some of those things that I can do and develop so that I can better run as a Jeep on the Ferrari track. It's all about how we show up and using what we have to the maximum capability. Find things that actually scare you a little bit, right? If you are an introvert, we just talked about introvert, extrovert, right? I'm an introvert. If you are an introvert, uh, maybe you, you sign up to give a talk in front of people, sure. right? Maybe you go walk up to people and and um, and introduce yourself to, to strangers. I don't like heights, so roller coasters, I can't stand them. So when I'm with my boys, you know, one of them does like roller coasters, I say, okay, I'm going to go on the roller coaster with you, right? So I can practice this idea of working through fear um, because, again, these life events that happen to us are typically going to uh, include that uncertainty portion. I mean, that, yeah. that first day of quarantine you know none of us knew what was going on all of us had uncertainty and those of us who understood what uncertainty feels like and how to deal with it found ourselves fairly you know okay pick a couple of different attributes Mm -hmm. that you think have the biggest delta of impact on somebody's life yeah if they start to work on those and also the greatest ability for us to to actually change those different characteristics Hands down, it's the grid attributes, and it's four of them. It's courage, adaptability, perseverance, and resilience. I believe those are probably the most important elemental attributes for human existence, right? Because those speak to how we operate in the world in every capacity. Courage is stepping into our fear, right? Again, courage is, we can't, we've heard it all the time, but people forget it cannot exist in the absence of fear. And this is proved neurologically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, courage is a switch, and when we when we step into, when we choose the fight response, it's a specific switch that, that, that gets clicked in our brain, which gives us a dopamine reward. That choice doesn't happen unless fear is present, right? So, um, so practicing courage is something that is always going to help. People have to understand this. When, we, when, we get, when we're given that choice, fight or flight, okay? When we choose to fight, which means step into our fear, our, our brain gives us, our body gives us a, a dopamine hit. And dopamine, one of the most powerful chemicals on the planet, right, says this is good, keep doing this. It makes us feel good. Mm-hmm. It's also the root of all addictive behavior, right? Um, stepping into our fear feels good. Um, and so this is what we have to do. And I think what you say is absolutely correct. And what the emphasis should be is the feeling afterwards. Because if people right. pick something small and do it, they're going to feel great, you know, and it's because they're getting they're getting hit with dopamine because of it, right? Um, and then they can step and try something else, you know, um, and then try something else. But could be karaoke. Could be karaoke. Could yeah. be you know, <laughs> like, again, whatever. it could be speaking in front. It could be starting yeah. a conversation. It could be you know, I don't know, you name it. it. Could be listen. If you're afraid of the water, it could be swimming in a swimming pool. If mm-hmm. you're afraid of open water, which most people are fine in swimming pools, but it's the it's the open water. It might be just swimming out, you know, into the uh, open water. But again, it could be almost as simple as someone who is, who who is and has been out of shape their entire lives, and they really want to get in shape. They don't know how to do. It. They say, well, maybe you know, they, they maybe they don't want to go start running or or whatever. Um, it's it's like, hey, I'm going to buy a pair of running shoes. That's my first step, you know. And then when I get in, I'm going to put the running shoes by the front door, okay. And the next morning, I'm actually going to get up with an alarm and I'm going to put on my running shoes okay and then the next day they do then I'm going to put on my running shoes I'm going to walk outside I mean you you can chunk this however you want the 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 idea is to chunk it you have to chunk it into into sizes that are meaningful enough for you so that when you accomplish it you feel that feeling right get that dopamine hit because you will love it you know if you do it and it'll you'll feel it and you're like okay I'm going to do it again uh, tomorrow, or do, yeah. or take the take the next step, and and even those steps don't have to be necessarily immediately sequential, right? I mean, dipping your feet in the cold plunge um, every day for a week might you know might be fine for you, and then you're going to find that dopamine hit doesn't feel. So here's a great example. I don't I I've said it many times. I'll say it again. I don't like heights. Okay, um, and so on every seal base there's an obstacle course. West coast at Buds, East coast. 
Um, and on every obstacle course, there's a cargo net climb. Okay, the cargo net climb is a 65 foot net that goes straight up, and you basically climb up one side, and you once you're at the top, you flip over, and then you climb down. Okay, um, for for people who don't like heights, it's it's tough, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, when I was uh, even when I was in the teams, I'd usually go whenever I go for a run. You know, I'd t- I'd plan my run that I'd go by that cargo net, and when I hit it, I'd climb to the top. And at the top, which is the worst part, right, I would just sit there. And sitting there, I could feel, I basically was breathing in the fear. You know, I, I would feel nervous. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd just sit there and I'd feel the wind and the sway and all that stuff. And then I'd go down. Um, and then, and I'd do that over and over again. After a while, you know, a week or maybe even two weeks, after a while, when I got at the top, I wasn't, I didn't feel it. I feel, yeah. I feel awesome when I finished it. After a while, I... I wasn't I wasn't scared anymore. It's called it's it's basically inoculation. It's fear inoculation. Um, but when you inoculate yourself, you also lose the dopamine reward, right? So so if people are going to take these steps, they have. Take them in context with the size and bite they want to take, um, and they have to recognize. Take them until you're not getting that reward anymore. And as soon as you don't get that reward, you need to up the ante, you know, and mm-hmm. take and, and take the next step uh, because you will inoculate yourself after a period of time. This is courage. Let's mm-hmm. go through the other ones. Okay, perseverance. Uh, so perseverance again. Perseverance is interesting. What I recognize with perseverance is it it in fact is a combination of three things it's a combination of uh persistence tenacity and uh fortitude um and the reason why it's a combination of those things is because persistence and tenacity people often think are synonymous but they're not um persistence is i'm going to basically do something over and over again until i get a result okay that's the stone cutter approach right the stone cutter taps the taps the stone in the same place you know you know 80 times, 90 times, never sees anything, and on the 100th tap, it breaks, right? That's mm-hmm. persistence. Sometimes persistence is required. You have to just you have to go head down and do it. Tenacity is I'm going to try something, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to change and try something else. This is the car mechanic, right? The car mechanic will check the belts first. If it's not the belts, then they'll check the, the fuel injector or whatever, right? Um, you don't want necessarily a persistent mechanic, right? Because... The persistent mechanic is going to check the belts and then check the belts again and then check the belts again and <laughs> check the belt and you just get a, a a high a high bill right. You don't necessarily want a tenacious stone cutter, <laughs> okay? Because yeah. the rock's never going to break, okay? Um, so you have a balance between the two, um, and then you have fortitude. Fortitude is really just that. Fortitude is really my, <clears throat> I guess, definition of what mental toughness really is. Fortitude is the ability to kind of um, understand and move through either persistence and tenacity and make stuff happen right um so those two are buttressed by fortitude all that combined is perseverance perseverance is the ability to kind of move and step through
continue on. So that's perseverance. And then we get adaptability. Adaptability yeah. is everything in this universe changes, okay? Without exception. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. think they've found anything that doesn't change over time. In our physical world, I mean, we have to recognize that, that the environment is going to change around us outside of our control. And um, it will be impossible and futile to push against it, right? Sometimes we just have to adapt. This is the dinosaur or the frog, right? If you don't adapt, you go extinct. Um, and so adaptation is something that we all need if we want to have overall total grit. So you have adaptability, and then finally you have resilience. Resilience is absolutely necessary for grit because because grit involves the ability to kind of keep doing it. You know, that's true grit is keep doing it. If you're not, if you're not, if you get hit and you and you're done, right? That's not grit. You know, grit involves the ability to kind of bounce back as well. And so resilience is that. Hey, I get knocked off baseline. Can I bounce back to baseline? Um, either direction, right? Because because really, what what true grit and overall drive requires is that we keep pushing through and not get sidelined by the lows and the challenges, but also not get seduced by the highs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes those those small wins, they're great in terms of getting us a little bit more of a of a biochemical boost, but but we can't rest on our laurels. We can't stop there, you know? And so, uh, and so resilience is about the ability to kind of understand that elasticity of the process. And so those four combined add up to overall grit. And again, grit speaks to this kind of ability to move through these acute challenges you know that grit is i think the most important if anybody wanted to kind of say hey i just want to focus on four those would be the, fo the four to focus on